kidnapped you. You made it. What up? Wait, how'd you get here? It's here, Hobsco e scooter. E scooter? E scooter. And it folds too. It folds up so you can just carry it? Yep. That's yep. pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Hey, you got to show me more. Let me check it out. Yeah, this thing's pretty cool. I like the little flashy red on it. Nice accents. 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 Nice accents. What do you think, dog dog? Do you like it? Man, this will save me on gas too. Drive back and forth to the job site in the back. It's not bad. I mean it hits just shy of twenty. Oh. Nice. I can kind of roll to the back too. And they did tell us in advance that it was intended for pavement, but I mean it's been doing good on our gravel roads. Of course Chris put ours in, so you know, they're let's dig 18 roads, so that's a little better than regular roads. What do you weigh, like a buck 30? All right, let's see what happens when I get on it. I'll be the upper end of the scale. <laughs> Oh, so it's got front and back brakes. It does. Okay. Brakes aren't bad either. All right, let's go to the road. Yeah, the brakes are good too. Yeah, all right. Yeah, I like this. So front and rear brakes, you got the power switches right here. This clicks down to fold it up. And cool. All right, I'll put a link in the description if you want to purchase one for yourself or you know, this would be great for the kids too. They're not here uh, today to to be in the video with us, but uh, this would be great for them too. And I do get a small percentage if you uh, purchase through the link, but everything I make goes back into the channel. Better, better uh, cameras, audio gear, stuff like that. So we appreciate you. Hope everybody has a really good day. Back out here, it's a beautiful Wednesday in March. Not a cloud in the sky. The temperature crept back up. Quincy's come to help. James is here. See him just throw my stuff down. No regard for whether it breaks or not. See? James Brown, ICF expert. <laughs> Uh, all right, so, yeah, well, let me tell y'all what's going to happen today. All right, we're going to get some block open and ready for stacking. We already took and put the ICF bracing around. Quincy's in there stacking the hall. They're going to get that open. We're going to go around and start putting the bracing everywhere that we've got three or more courses. And then once we get the bracing screwed up to the wall, they can, uh, James and Dalton are going to grab two by eight. They'll go ahead and put our walk planks up. Probably going to order some more two by eights. Mike, a lot of y'all watch him, Dirt Perfect. He has this bracing system and uh, he uses just one two by eight, but they've been doing a lot longer than us. So I may, uh, I may just put another, uh, another row up there for a little extra walk space and safety. Uh, but yeah, it'll probably, once we get this bracing on the wall, I expect it take the two guys half a day to get it all set up and actually ready. Uh, I'm going to talk about these seams, these common seams. 
I did not realize it's been a couple videos ago, but I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm staging these videos a little ahead uh, when I can get time to work on the editing. I didn't realize how many people were gonna notice that and ask about it. So we're gonna talk about those. Uh, with the bracing, I did purchase this. Uh, it varies. Jason Snyder at Superform is who hooked me up with uh, the plumb wall bracing. I'll put his contact details in the description. Good guy to work with. Your price is gonna vary, but expect you're gonna if you don't get the crates which i didn't because i'm gonna plan to have a trailer that's dedicated uh to storing and moving these around from job site to job site so if you don't get the crates expect you're gonna be around 275 per brace uh to purchase if you want to rent them there's people that rent them the prices vary but uh if you're just getting them for a week it seems like the average is 20 dollars per brace per week uh, I'm going to rent these when we're done. We've got my job to do. Then we got Quincy's house and we're gonna build at least one spec house. So it just made sense for us to go ahead and purchase. Uh, but I will rent them out and I'm probably gonna do around that $20 a week mark. But if someone's gonna get them for more than a week, we're gonna do some sort of deal. Uh, but that's your options. You can also find people selling U sets. Uh, there's different brace manufacturers and you can do your research on them. I like this one uh, just because how it, easily it works. Um, so that's it for the bracing. We'll talk about the uh, common seam here in a minute. All right, here's a good one to show you. So there are a lot of common seams in mine. So if you have your corner, and so you set all your corners up and you're going corner to corner, right? If, like this little turn here. So this is not a full piece to fit from here to here. Now, if it was a multiple of eight, because of your eight inches between your webs, you wouldn't need a seam. It was like if this was 16 inches, then you could just take, cut it to 16, you'd have your two deal, it would be eight inches to the next one, and you could just clip this if you needed to, once you clip it all the corners, okay? But because it's not, you have to cut a shorter piece, okay? And then what happens is, so if I decided to put the common seam just wherever, so you know, some people are talking about just going over it. Well, you could do that, right? So let's say I cut that tighter and went over and locked it in, which does make sense. I thought the same thing. Now what happens is you would start your full piece there. You come to this end, well, then you'd have to cut a piece to fit here. And so let's say you cut a piece to fit here again, and then you keep going up, right? What you end up with is the webbing not lining up. So you would end up with it being all haphazard. You'd have a web off here. Next layer, you'd have a web off here, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one problem you end up with. You know, you want these, these are just like studs. So when I'm done with this, these forms stay on, the wall's already insulated, and I can screw sheetrock right to this instead of having to come back and have, you know, the cost of wood and framing and all that, okay? So, if we did it that way, and didn't have the common seam, then you would end up with, like I said, that would be all over the place. You pick one spot, you're gonna do it, run it all the way up, you put, you know, the wood straps on it, if it's less than eight inches between them, you do one strap. If it's more than eight inches, you do two straps. And then we'll come back and as we make sure our wall is staying plumb, then we'll come back with spray foam, uh, the spray foam glue stuff, fill that up all the way up. And then you've got that strength there. So then when you're done, it becomes the same. You still have, yes, these two are closer together, but they're the same all the way up. That's the main reason for it is because you're not building an equal multiplication of the size block you have. The Dura is eight feet long, but you're still not gonna be in equal numbers of the uh, of that multiplier. You're gonna have to have cuts. And so wherever you have those cuts, like I said, there's some spots, I'll see if I find one, I'll film it, but if it ends up being eight inches, you can just put a clip on and keep going like normal because it's still the same spacing. So that's why you're trying to keep this spacing uh, over top of each other. 
and so you end up with these common seams. All right, so in here, Quincy's stacking this one. All the corners get clips. That clip won't matter because uh, it's not the corner, see? That's where that corner came back to. And then you flip them the next way. So they get clipped. And uh, it's time for me to get to work instead of running off at the mouth. But that's generally what we're going to do today is try and get these braces up and get more forms ready to go so that we can do some stacking. Right, James? Yep. Right, Dalton? Yep. Sure. I don't know where Q's at. I'd ask him. Oh, he, no, he went up to the top. He probably went to find uh, materials, clips and stuff. Well, somebody, it was me. I was going to blame Dalton, but y'all weren't going to believe me anyway. Mm -hmm. Somebody forgot to uh, set up a time-lapse camera oh. yesterday because I was here some, but then I was gone, blah, 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 taking care of stuff. So we got all the bracing up. Yep. We'll say some of those corners were a pain in the butt. Yeah. So we got the bracing up. I think I was actually recording some when Quincy was here. So Quincy helped out. We got the bracing up. We got another row on that wall. We got a lot of stuff in there done. And Dalton built the, uh, I put the, all this up and Dalton built the uh, scaffolding and everything. So that's all up. We got a couple little things to do, but it's pretty close. And he's got to put that side up, so he'll work on that now. We're going to go up top and grab more um, corners and straights and bring those down and go ahead and get it all staged. That way we can just roll through it because really the next biggest things we have that are time consuming is mostly in this hallway tying in this T-wall. The radius there, there, and here and the let me show you this the tie-in for the garage this actually comes right next to this block so we got to measure in so this will actually be a uh 
I gotta decide how we're gonna do that. We were talking about just stacking a block next to it and tying it in, but that's I feel like that's gonna be too far in. So we gotta do some measurements here. This is supposed to be the where do they do that? So that's the corner of the foundation, 24 inches. Well, hey, that was an abrupt ending. <laughs> so I uh, did film some more, but of course, as is with uh, technology, the mics had died. So these mics sound better, which is great, but they don't beat, they don't do a, anything when they cut off or that they uh, are getting low on power. So, or at least I haven't found anything, right? What do you mean? All right, I'll put you in charge then. <laughs> so yeah, so we finished up. Come on. There we go. So yeah, so uh, we saw what all got done, so that was pretty good. Eh, let's ride to the back. So just a few quick updates before we end this video and kind of what's coming. So a little sneak peek, because this has actually been a few days. We've been working on the curve, so that's pretty cool. This is going to be really neat. You can, you know, showcase other things you can do with ICF. The usual ICF build has minimal corners or what people usually do is minimal corners, not really a lot of curves. Of course, there's other people out there who build curves and corners, obviously, but I say the mainstream, the, the usual one that gets done. So yeah, we kind of went overboard. <laughs> Big shot. So yeah, so I've been working on that. That turned out pretty cool. It's a kind of quick shot. The uh, fog is coming off the lake this morning. The fog steam. The condensation as the water heats up, maybe. Whatever. Anyway, so uh, Dalton has gone back to Florida. Uh, so working on seeing if he wants to come down and spend the summer here. So hopefully that will happen. Chad from... Trimco, which is a division or owns Nadura, is coming back out to help today. Quincy's coming back out to help today. Uh, some of the guys you've seen in the background that help when we're doing various things like unloading and stuff like that, they're coming out. So we're gonna have them working on some things. Aaron has confirmed he'll be back here Saturday and we're going to do the pool pour Monday. So you should be seeing this video on Tuesday. So this coming up Monday, because today is Tuesday. I just had to come film this outro real quick. Uh, this coming Monday, we're gonna pour the lower pool. Uh, today, James and I, mostly James, honestly, we're going to put the living aeration diffuser system in at six pads. I'll go over that in detail in an upcoming video. People have asked about the color on the pond and it's not, now, after a big rain, yes, obviously we got some silt and some mud, but that's not what's causing this. I've done some samples. It's what they call tannin, no G-T-A-N-N-I-N. It's various things it picks up in the, in the color and when it runs in. So basically the surrounding area dyes the pond depending on what it runs through, like a bunch of leaves or whatever. We have a plan for that too and something to take, but I'll get into that more. That's what's going on with that. And today, or what you'll see probably Thursday's video, I'm trying to do Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, is we're gonna try and stack all of this except for the walkout, because the walkout's where we have to cut for windows and do that stuff, so that's gonna be another deal. But unfortunately, we're getting a lot of rain tomorrow and Thursday, so today's it, and then 
Uh, nothing will get done again till Friday. Also, my sister-in-law goes in that y'all have seen on the channel some. She goes in for surgery Thursday. So keep you up, keep her in your thoughts. We need prayers and well wishes and whatever it is you you believe in and do is uh, welcome. And she's been really fighting, dealing with a lot of whole lot of pain over the last couple months. It's been rough. So uh, hoping that all gets taken care of, right? What you got? All right, I'm sure there's more stuff I'm supposed to talk about. I'll try and remember, because now I'm gonna start my filming for Thursday. And uh, so if you watch these back to back, you'll notice it's pretty much the same day and outfit and blah, blah, blah. So appreciate everybody watching, appreciate the comments and see you in the next one.